Okay, class, we're back to movements at synovial joints. Practice these movements while we're going through them. Make sure you understand them. You will be learning the muscles that make these movements. So we've already done flexion and extension. I had a whole video that went over all the joints that you need to know that will have flexion and extension. Now we're going to this paired movement, um, abduction and adduction. So abduction, a lot of times they'll say abduction. Abduction is the movement of a body part away from the midline. It's real easy once you see it. Adduction, adduction, is the movement of a body part towards the midline. So these are all the joints you need to be able to show that on. Shoulder, wrist, a metacarpal phalange joint, the hip joint, and the thumb. So let's get started with the shoulder. So the other thing, when we say shoulder joint, we are talking about the glenohumeral joint. What does that mean? The glenoid fossa is where the head of the humerus sits. So this is the glenohumeral joint, the head of the humerus in the glenoid fossa. So this movement is in the coronal plane. Remember your coronal suture is right here. So this is in the coronal plane. Flexion and extension are in the sagittal plane, forward and back. So remember in flexion, everything was forward except the knee and extension, everything was back. So we're doing ab and adduction in this coronal plane. Here you sh they're showing you abduction. You're in the basically in an anatomical position. You're lifting your arm away from the body in the coronal plane. Adduction, you're returning it to the body towards the midline. Now you're going to see this if you go to the gym a lot. So here she is doing ad abduction, abduction. She's lifting those arms up. If you um, go to the gym, this would be a standard deltoid fly right here. That is the muscle that is doing that movement. And here is showing you adduction at the shoulder. So the arm is already abducted out. You're going to bring that pulley back in. You're going to pull that pulley and that arm is going to be pulled towards back to the midline. So pretty easy once you see it. So here's just a little video of someone doing shoulder ab and adduction. Adduction, abduction, ad, ab, adduction, abduction. Pretty easy, right? Now, you can also have ab and adduction at the hip joint. Same thing. Abduction is going to take the leg at the hip joint away from the midline, and adduction is going to bring it back to the midline. Um, some people will do it um, across the midline too. But your standard adduction away abduction away, adduction back towards the midline. So in the gym, you'll see it um, with these bands. You'll see people doing this, these band exercises, pulling. This is all happening at the hip joint. This action is pull. This is abduction away and then adduction. Here he's, he's his leg is already abducted and he's going to pull that leg 
back in. So this is going to be adduction of the hip joint. Make sure you always say ab adduction of the whatever joint you're talking about. So I wanted to show you this video. You should be able to recognize any movement at a joint regardless of the, the position that the patient is in or a person is in. Here she is. This, this lady is laying down. She's going to be doing ab and adduction at the hip joint. She'll be lifting her leg up away from the midline and back towards the midline. And I'm also going to show you, because this is all in the coronal plane, and then she's actually going to do hip flexion and extension in this video too. So I just wanted to bring that in here so you could see these are two different planes that she is, is using, um, that, that hip joint is giving her two different planes of movement. So let's see this video. So there's abduction away from the midline, add back towards the midline, ab, add, ab, add, pretty easy to see, right? And now she's going to go into hip, there's flexion, forward, hip extension, back, hip flexion, extension, that is in the sagittal plane. So pretty easy to see. So next we're going to do ab adduction of the fingers, the digits. Now, this action for digits 2, 3, 4, and 5, this action is going to be taking at these metacarpal phalange joints. Metacarpal phalange joints, the MCP joint. These interphalange joints, they they are not moving. The movement is happening down here at these metacarpal phalange joints. So abduction is when you spread your fingers out apart and adduction is when you bring them back together. And here the, the midline um, is not the midline of your body, but basically the midline of the hand. So here it's showing your hand with your, <clears throat> your phalanges and the metacarpals right here. So abduction, spreading apart. Remember the action is at those metacarpal phalange joints. And then adduction, they are brought back towards the midline. Here is showing you just one joint, the, this middle finger joint. Uh, the metacarpal phalange joints. So you can actually see the inner phalange joints are not moving with ab and adduction. They are just being carried. This is what is being moved, that metacarpal phalange joint. So just remember, metac MCP joint, metacarpal phalange, metacarpal phalange joints of the digits give you ab and adduction. So this is a pretty easy movement to visualize. I just wanted to show you this just to make sure you understand what's going on. Um, so just watch this. So this is going to be the midline. There is abduction away from the midline and then adduction back towards the midline. Pretty simple, right? Ab and adduction. Then we're going to come to the thumb. Now, ab and adduction of the thumb is not taking place at the metacarpal. Here's the metacarpal of the thumb and phalange joint. It is actually taking place down here at the carpo metacarpal joint, which is basically the, the metacarpal number one is articulating with what carpal bone was this? This is trapezium. 
So remember the thumb swings from the trapezium. This carpal metacarpal joint is going to allow the thumb to do extra stuff. It's going to give, give the thumb the ability to abduct and adduct. It's a little bit different than the, with the fingers. And I really don't have a video for this. Um, but if your hand, if you put your hand in this position right now, and you have a lateral view of it, and then pull your thumb down like this, that will be abduction. And you can see the plane uh, where that thumb is going if you do it yourself. And then when you bring the thumb back t towards your index finger, that would be adduction. But the action is happening here at the, the metacarpal um, bone and the trapezium. We're going to learn about this trapezium. They call it a saddle joint. It's a special kind of joint that only the thumb has. So that's thumb, ab, and adduction. And our last ab adduction joint is going to be our wrist joint. Remember the wrist joint aka the radiocarpal joint. Why is it called radio? Because it's formed from the distal end of the radius. Carpal, the two carpal bones that form that wrist joint, the scaphoid and the lunate. So wrist joint, a.k.a. radiocarpal joint, will have the ability to do ab and adduction. So put yourself in this position. I want you to do this yourself. So put your hands down in the anatomical position um, with your palms facing forward and look down and you see that it is your thumb that is the most lateral part, right? Remember, the radius is your lateral most bone. So this is your lateral side. This will be the medial side where the ulna would be. The ulna is your medial forearm bone. So in the anatomical position, if you do abduction, abduction, you are going to be moving away from the midline of the body. So go ahead and do abduction. Um, point your wrist, pull your wrist towards your thumb side. So move that wrist towards the thumb side. That is going to be abduction, abduction, aka radial deviation. Why is it radial deviation? Because it's on the radial side. Now if you do adduction, adduction, you are going to be bringing it back towards the midline of the body. So go ahead and do that. That is going towards the midline of the body. Adduction, aka ulnar deviation, because you are bringing that wrist towards the ulna, which is right here, the medium bone. So make sure you can understand that abduction away from the body, aka radial deviation, adduction towards the body, aka ulnar deviation. And I have a video that shows this too. So in this video, I want you to have your right hand facing you. Um, that's what she's going to be using in this video, so you can do these actions with her. She's also going to be doing wrist flexion and extension. So go ahead and practice those while she's doing this. Remember, radial side, thumb side is going away from the body, abduction and wrist abduction. And ulna side is the medial side that is going to go um, towards the body that is adduction. So get, let's get started and follow along with your own hand with this video. This is an anterior view of the right hand. Here we have the medial aspect of the hand and the lateral aspect of the hand. 
The wrist joint is involved in four movements. Flexion occurs when the angle decreases at the joint. And extension occurs when the angle increases at the joint. Again, in a different plane, we have flexion of the wrist joint and extension of the wrist joint. The hand can also produce adduction when the hand moves closer to the midline of the body and also abduction when the hand moves farther away. So that was good. So you actually got to see wrist um, flexion and extension again, and then ab and an adduction. Not too bad, right? Once you understand what's going on. Now we're going to talk about circumduction. Now circumduction is your, the, the joint is able to, to produce a circular movement. Um, the proximal end of the limb is basically stable and it is the distal end that is moving in a circle. So you're going to see this only basically in the shoulder in the hip joint. The, the thumb has a modified circumduction, but it's not true circumduction. So we're going to look at just the shoulder, shoulder joint and the hip joint. So here's a, a little video on arm circumduction. Pretty easy to visualize. So remember, the action is happening at the glenohumeral joint, the shoulder joint. This is the head of the humerus rotating in that glenoid fossa. So pretty easy, right? And here we have hip circumduction. Easy to see. And I just wanted to show you this so you can um, see that all these movements can be performed um, standing up, laying down. So just recognize the movement. Remember this, she's going to be sh showing you hip circumduction also. So this is happening at the, the head of the femur in that acetabulum of the hip joint. Circumduction, making a nice round circle there. Hip and shoulder joints do that movement. So that's going to be it for this video. Make sure you understand all the ab and adduction joints that we went over. Practice them on yourself. Circumduction only is happening at your shoulder and hip joint. And the next video, we're going to be covering rotational movements. So that's it for this video.